Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to our 21st live stream presentation from Tlacopaki. You know what I'm going to say, it's another beautiful day in paradise. <laughs> Not only are the leaves changing and the weather's beautiful, but we have El Rincon, our great Mexican food restaurant, roasting chili, so you have that smell too at the same time. Everybody's anxious to get to what we have to show you today, and Shirley did an amazing job last week. We get to see her progress, but before that, I want all of you to put a face to the name of the people that make this whole live stream possible, and that's Randy and Lee with Red Rock TV. So if you guys don't mind, come over. I want to introduce you. So this is Lee, our, our technician extraordinaire, cameraman, and everything else you can think of. And this is Randy, our right-hand guy that conveys questions and everything else to us. For 20 years, I've been using these guys for our commercial here in Tlacopaki, so we're we applaud you for your effort and what you do behind the camera thank so you, yeah. thank you guys everybody. all right now we get to get to Shirley I'm gonna let Fritzy go back to work so Shirley last weekend we saw you starting to weave this piece yeah. we talked a lot about how you you burned you burned this section here yeah. to make yeah, that the wood burning contrast and the, for the hair and the lines for the right. hair and then you were showing us how to weave right. some of these things. So what are you going to do right now? Well, the comment that came afterwards from last time was that they didn't see enough of my weaving. So, mm. whoa, let's get my re here. So <laughs> that brings up a point. You've got to make this long enough to do the entire... Not, not necessarily. Oh, you can, you can graft it I in. I can add in. Like right now I got a little knot, so that's not good. Yeah. So I'll undo the knot. Whoops. And we'll we already that. have Shelby Cube with us, guys. Oh, hey, hey Shelby. Hi there. Thanks, everyone. She okay. Said. Okay. Where's my, Welcome. where'd my, <laughs> where'd it go? Where'd it go? There we there go. There you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do right now is this little area here. And if you'll notice, this side is thinner than that side. So what I'm doing is I'm going to weave so that I can fill this in a little bit until they're even on both sides, and then I can continue on. So you don't have to take one weaving all the way around. You can go back and forth to close that gap. Right, I can. To make it uniform. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started with that. Okay. It now, will you take this, this stitching, for lack of a better term, all the way to the edge, or will you leave I a will. reveal? I okay. will, I will. Good. Now, let's see, we got my tool over there. I love these, what would you call these, windows? Yeah, they are kind of windows. Yeah. They kind of naturally happen when I, I start to weave down, and I love what happens there. Yeah. It All gives right. it a mother, another dimension. It basically. does, it More does. More three-dimensional. And it gives it that look like this is a skirt. Yeah. These are, this is a shawl. Yeah. And this is the top part of the dress. Yeah. And I noticed this looks almost like a face. It does. Ah. And, and it, it is. it's supposed to be. Yes, yeah, it is. Right? Now, what I did on this... I added a little bit of color on the outside to draw in the red that's down here, so that mm -hmm. it didn't have that up there, and I thought it would make it would make it come yeah. together. Yeah, just it enough does. to give it a little color. It does. So let's and do this. remind me of the title of this piece. The Elder. The Elders. That's yes, right. The Elder. Perfect. We came up with the best titles. It just really sometimes good. they just happen. I had a large antler elk antler that I did. It was a huge elk antler, yeah. and I. I knew it was going to be wax tall because oh. I knew this had to be a huge elk because the antler was so, so title. long. I'm going to steal some of those from my <laughs> sculptures. Yes. So, yeah, so this is fantastic. And I saw you brought some turquoise, not to rush you along I did. there. But those elements are going to be very interesting, right, too. I'm getting off. Again, don't let me rush you. I want you to do yeah, this. Yeah, it's getting all caught up in here, so yeah, I've got to go. undo now, this. Now, see, if a normal human being was doing this, those threads would be <laughs> in our hair and everywhere else, but where they should no. be. No. What happens is you get these knots every now and then. It drives you crazy. Yeah. Sometimes they're not, you can't get them undone. So what I do is I weave along until I get to where that knot yeah. is going to be. And then if I'm lucky, it ends up underneath. Ah. If I'm not lucky you have to at that top, it. then I have to cut it. Oh. Yeah. That's crazy. And then you're working around this can snag everything the whole yeah, time. Yes, it can. You're working. I'm being lazy, I guess. I could do this. Yeah, but still. So, hours. 
I mean, how many years first off you, have you been doing this? Well, I've been weaving for over 30 years. So 30 years. I've been doing art since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and you taught. And, and I taught, you're right. So still teach. I do. Well, right now I'm not, unfortunately. Yeah, because of COVID. But right. This keeps getting snagged on me. So you sometimes keep track of the hours you put into these I pieces. do just to get a better idea, and um, it helps me to know if I'm, what's going to happen if I'm doing another one or yeah. in my pricing. Now, this one, generally I would say so far maybe 25 hours, if, but it could be more. Yeah. Because just the cleaning and everything is where the time gets. So that's just to this point. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm not, not done. You're not done. Yeah, and it, of course every one is one of a kind. You can't reproduce it no. like I can with my sculpture. No. So they're all one of a kind. And, and keeping that in mind, this particular piece over here behind you has got two sides that it's woven, yes. on, woven on. So that means you're going to have more hours. Yeah. And actually more time just in deciding the whole overall design. Yes, I can see. That is amazing. So uh, you also do commissions. I do. And so you were talking about the biggest commission you've ever done. And I gotta have to pull these photos <laughs> up. This, you have to explain. These are called the spokes, correct? Those are the spokes. They were how long? Seven feet. So that required a ladder. Yes, it did. There you are using a ladder and a tripod. And then what I had to do because the spokes need to be kept moist and flexible, I'd have to come down, spray those spokes climb back up and weave some more. S come down, spray those spokes. Now think about this in the morning when I have to come back to get started and I have this long piece. So what I do is I took it, I held it with my arm, I went outside with my hose and I watered it and me down. And then back into and your studio And then went back into my it. studio. And you have to keep it damp the whole time you're weaving. I did. And oh when I'm getting gosh. further down, I'm further upside down. <laughs> so <laughs> needless to say, it had to, it's very hard on the back. And then the shape of it ended up being that this. and this is how tall four feet four feet the client nice. wanted it four feet they sent me the various pillows they had their house was white the, the yeah. sofas were white and that was based on that but i had done a lot of rainbow baskets but this is the largest rainbow basket i'd ever done and this is for our good friends the port noise that live here no this is not oh it is. this was done before they them. did one too though you only did theirs was smaller yeah <laughs> thankfully <laughs> yes yeah theirs was like 20 inches high because they had a little niche that they wanted to put it in, and I went over and measured to make sure I, yeah. I would make it the right size. Perfect. Hey, Ken and, and Shirley, yes. we've got someone else coming in, some additional viewers. Carol uh, Gossenheimer yeah. and Michelle Barniak, they're yeah. watching with us also. All so right. Well, good. Thank and you. And if you have any questions, please ask. So what's the title of this one? This one was Fiesta de Calor. Oh, good. That's and then I, these are little Indian, the little jingles that they use, the Native Americans use. Okay. So the little bells. Yeah, little bells. That is great. So commissions for sure. Can you use your own colors? Choose colors. You can use you can choose your own colors. Green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Green. Monica likes green, so Yes, yes. No, so, but you gotta have more than just green. I see a a prevalence toward blue with you. I yes. You like blue. I do love blue. I do too. I, I love blue. I love it too. So do we need to do more of this or do we need well, to? Well, let's go on to some really fascinating things. We'll talk about how you oh. may incorporate All right. these little tiny turquoise beads. Into so this. what I'm hoping to do is, is put a little belt on here. And these are what I'm thinking of using. And you'll string those with wire. I'll use some copper wire, and then I'll, wi I'll wire that and then turn it around. Yeah. I'll have to mm -hmm. twist it twist it in the front it and then turn it around. But that'll add that'll just a nice little... I was trying to figure out how I could in incorporate it at the top, but I thought, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, that looks great. And then the other thing is... Oh, this, yeah. I'm going to wrap the bottom of the, the tail here, but my thought was I have some horse hair. The idea being that I might wrap that into it and have it hang down. Like a ponytail. Like a ponytail. Yeah. Like so. That would be great. And I have this color and I have more of a white. Yeah. Um, but I think this would be better. So will this be done like you think in a week or so? Yeah. So what we'll do is once, once you get this done, of course, we'll have it on the website. Photos right. of the finished piece. Right. And so and it's, of course, available. But another one I want to talk about what's over your shoulder here. Okay. Should I go behind, you think? Yeah, yeah. So let's come on around. Can now, this is a new question, one. I you guys. Uh, really quick question. Sure. Can clients uh, that want special commission work done, can they incorporate any of their own 
beads and such? Yeah, some of well, the challenge with the beads, project? my client wanted to have beads on this particular one. There's, on the end of these, if they work with this reed, yes, not within the basket. Okay, sure. Yeah, if it, she wants something in the basket, I said it can't be done. Yeah, um, yeah. But I could do something on the, on the ends. But like if you had a window like here in this one, could you put some of those elements then I could, in? I could probably work with it the there. In the weaving part. Okay. Right, in there. Yeah. But not on something like this. Okay, good. But we have a bunch more viewers too, guys, All coming right. in. So All I just right. want to let you know who's here with us. Terrific. Well, yeah, Go they need it. to say um, hi. Hope I'm pronouncing right. Bobby Faye Seeger and Fana Guerrero watching with us. Oh, oh I uh, That's right. Nadine Ma Maris is watching with us. Good. Uh, uh, Kay Garkin is watching with us. Just oh, a bunch of people crowd, coming and viewing. Thanks so much. Welcome well, to everybody. Well, Shirley is available for autographs later. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's perfect. So, <laughs> so this is a great, a great piece. It's called? The Hunter. Yeah. It's my only male that I have done in the gourd. Oh, really? The only one. And I had the antlers, then the gourd, and I, I, I just kept envisioning incorporating them. I mean, at one point, when I had not separated them, and I thought, how can I do this? But it was a friend of mine that actually helped me with this base, helped me finish the base, mm -hmm. that helped me with that concept. And, yeah. and then this is the one I talked about last week where each of these are bolted on. So for shipping purposes, they can be unbolted and pull, sent separately or, or wrapped separately. I remember you saying something about that. This is a rabbit here fur that I got from a friend of mine. He'd had it for years, said, do you want it? And I said, sure. And I never knew when I was going to use it until this. It needed something. It was naked without it. And it's detachable, you said. It is. And let's see if I can do it without causing <laughs> any issue. Shirley, another really interesting question for you from Shelby. Uh-huh. What kind of thread do you use? That's a wax linen and on the, the, on the and boards. And also, do you dye your own? And on the reed, I do. Oh, you do dye your own. Great question. I do. Oh, so boy. this is, I took it off. This is a bear claw. Mm -hmm. And I bought the bear claw here at the trading post. And I had specifically asked him, is it okay to use it? And he said, here in Arizona, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's something to know because in, in California, it is not legal. I see. It's good to know that. It sure. is because they can confiscate it and just yeah. destroy it. And yeah. Sylvia's with us too, guys. Uh, Hi, Ray Sylvia. Ray. Welcome, Sylvia. Great to have we you with us. We get to work with you tomorrow. There we go. Okay, so now, uh, let's say you, you've had a bad night <laughs> and you washed your hair and you went to bed and you woke up the next morning. What would you have? <laughs> a bad hair a day. A bad hair day. And this is, this is me in the morning. Okay, <laughs> so Shirley, this is really fascinating. That looks like an impossible task to start weaving all this. <laughs> Initially it is. <laughs> so will you show us how you would start that? So you have to get it wet. First I have to wet it down very so carefully. So she's it in some warm water very carefully. Because they can break. Boy, that looks like an accident. Guys, we got them coming in from all over. We have uh, Lisa Heslop from, uh, saying hello from Pittsburgh. Oh, Lisa, right. so She Welcome. lived in AZ for 20 years and uh, missed getting there. The oh, gourd, to... gourds are amazing, she says, Shirley. Yeah. Thank you. Lisa, you need to come here. This place is beautiful. You have to experience it. The leaves are changing. It's stunning. So all this, right. these are, what is this? This is my weaver. This is a reed. It's a rattan. And I have dyed this. This is actually a number two round. They make okay. them in all sizes. Yeah. The spokes are actually number three. Okay. And so I'll weave with this. I need to have two of these out. So when you soak this, it makes it much more pliable. Much more pliable. But I'm surprised it's not brittle. Sometimes it, it can be. Sometimes oh, okay. it can be. You Especially can get, in Arizona where it's You can dry. get some where they just, all they do is break. Yeah. And so you just throw it out and start again. Like right now. Here I guess, again, you're working with how many feet? Oh, just, just uh, I like working long. <laughs> gosh, I don't know how you do that. All right, so let's put this in the water while I rework the... Okay. So how long will this have to soak? Not or is that it long. Already, is it already done? That's done. Let me move this out a little bit. In order to do this, first of all, I had to figure out how high I wanted my weaving to be. And then I have to also add time, uh, sp uh, length for the, the braided border that I do. So you wouldn't think I'd need it this long because I only want it to be woven up that far. Yeah. These are about 30 inches. Are they really? Mm -hmm. So, but you, you have the, the option of once you weave it, you could leave these out. I could, but I don't yeah. only because I, I feel they're more fragile. They'll break. Yeah. I'm, and I've done it, I had actually a, cl a student that did. And I said, now you have to know that it, they will break. Is this already soft enough for you to start weaving? It is. 
More wow. viewers coming in, guys. All Alex right. Bodman is with us. Regina Lopez. Wow. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Janessa Rudolph. Just a great Wow, great this crowd. is terrific. A lot of Wonderful. Great, viewers today. great questions so, so far. Thank you, guys. I'm going to be weaving it from the inside because I want this to go out. I don't want that weaving to come back in like this. Okay. So I have to go in there and physically kind of work it out. Boy, this looks impossible. <laughs> I it's mean, not honestly, like working with clay, I will tell you. Where did you start? I do on this one. Actually, my hands look pretty good this morning. They were pretty dirty last night. The question was, does Shirley end up with a lot of dye on her hands? And then she does, yes. Yes, I do. Yeah. They can be real colorful at times. So you're starting off by trying to lock in. I'm, I'm doing a, what they call a twine around, and I'm trying to lock that in. You need me to turn go turn around here so you can see it, Lee. I think it's yeah. Me, okay. You let me do this. Around. Why don't you move the the step stool? Sure. Ooh. All right. So I'm going to do it this way so you can can you see there? All right. You feel like you're all hands right now, and the first row doesn't really lock it in very well. Well, look how long this is you're working with. I know. But I don't like to stop and start all the time. Wow, that's... <laughs> Once I'm on a roll, I just keep going. I don't know how you even manage the materials themselves without breaking and... Well, there are times that they just, do this is This is the there, years of experience. Yeah, and there's sometimes when it just that's all it's doing, and so then I just stop. I yeah. just think, well, it's not my day-to-day -day to be doing this, so I do something else. Yeah, that looks... More yeah. viewers, guys, just coming in from all over. Mar uh, Marlon St. Croix and Sheila Clarenbeek are watching oh, with us. Good. Welcome. Thank where are you, you guys coming from? That's what I'm I'd like to know. Seeing that, oh, if you want to let us know where you guys are from, it. those recent viewers. Well, we've mentioned before, Shirley, that the people that chime in make the live stream come to life. They and this do. Is really, an, a they great do. example of that. So we love it. It's I'm so waiting for fun. my sister to sign in. Yeah. Well, she's probably watching. One of sixteen. Yeah. How many sisters? <laughs> well, I have actually. There's eight sisters. Two of yeah. them are now gone, and then yeah. I have. Yeah. There were seven brothers, and now two of them are gone. So. Yeah. There's wow. 16 of us in the family. That is great. So it's, this is the hardest part is this first few rows, I'll tell you. So this kind of, this first row that you're weaving kind of helps organize the spokes. Right, right. Of this. They won't totally stay up there because if I let go, see how they come down? Yes, yes. But the second row will start to hold it up. Yes. I can see they're starting to stand up already yeah. the way you're weaving it. It's just kind of training them. You really have to think this out in advance. Lori Peterson, Shirley, saying hi. All right, hi Lori. Lori. Well, I'm Lori. glad you're coming in. Yes. She's in the Weaver's Guild with me. Oh, Carol Gossenheimer says from Flagstaff. All right. Oh, so Carol, she's watching good. from. So well, You're not far away and you come down not and see us. Not too far away. Welcome, Carol. Now, I have to do this every now and then, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You like your, your, it gets um, all it gets all wound so up. So you can so do steer roping on the side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. And so, <laughs> somebody said, "What hair product do you use?" Yeah, actually, water uh, the fabric softener. Oh, I can see where that would help. Fabric softener does. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is. But you can see what's happening yeah, there. Yeah. So this the stitching is really starting to organize. And then but you, you're going to have like three or four rows before you even see, see what's above. Yes. Oh, yeah. Your raccoon. No, I'm going to probably, I'll be putting, here, this is a good segue. Shirley, Carol's asking if there's other members of your family that are artists as well. There are a number of people in my family, they don't think they're artists. I have a niece that is actually an artist in California, and she has a, a, a business of her own. But some have done um, Fabri oh, not fabric, what is it, uh, reupholstery work. My sister never thought she was much of an artist and she did absolutely fabulous work. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and actually the in it was an interesting question. I was thinking about this this morning. In my mom's side of the family, back in the 1600s, we have a relative that was a collaborative with Peter Paul Rubens and did the florals. Really? And I, we happened to see one of his paintings in Dallas. We were at the museum when we were living there. And I saw that name and I thought, oh my God. That's I knew it had to be, it's a, it, the name is Beert, and that's my mom's name, and I thought it has to be, and, and it, it is, was. it was. So I Boy, thought, you it's on my mom's side. That's terrific. I never would have thought initially, because my dad was the one that used to come around, and he would draw horses for us. Ah, so, dad so had he his had own. the talent as well. Yeah, but we all have had, there's a, there's a bit of it, and yeah. there's 
Some that are crocheters, they don't do the other art, but they do the yeah. crocheting. So no, it's all of them work with their hands. They do. Yeah. But you know, when you're born on a, and raised on a yeah. farm, yeah. that's just life. Yeah. And you have to find things to do that you'd like to do. And I did this. They played cards. <laughs> A couple of things, guys. I've got some of the toughest names today, I have to say. <laughs> oh, right. gosh. Okay. Uh, Susie Gemmenhart is watching with us. Okay. Uh, Carol's asking which gallery. She's going to be driving right by uh, Talaka Pocky. Oh, it's well, the it's Row Fine Art Gallery. We're yes. right in the front under the right bell tower. The Please come in. Ken Rowe Gallery. You can't And all miss of these, these works, now, now the, these two I might be taking home, but they can always come back in. That's yeah. not a problem. And the, all the photos of these pieces will be on our yes, website, they too. Will but be. there are several pieces here at the right. gallery. One other great question, too, Shirley. This is so, so awesome. Uh, Lisa Heslop again with us. Uh, how do you solve the problem of placing holes in your pottery to make sure they're large enough to make your material once it comes out of Good question. the kiln? That is a great when question. When I'm making the pot itself while it's still soft, the clay is still soft, I make the holes. Now, typically oh. I'm using the number three round reed, but if I know I'm making a bigger pot and it needs a larger reed, I'll make the, ho the holes accordingly. Yeah. The biggest thing when you do that after I've fired it, bisque fired it, and I then put the glaze on, is you have to clean those holes out. Um, I have a little tool that I literally ream out those holes. Like a Dremel? No, no. It's, um, I don't think I brought it with me. It's actually got a little uh, grit on the end of it. I just kind of hmm. go and push it out. And with I, when I teach classes, I kept I kept telling my students, you need to clean it out. And oh, invariably, you had those that didn't. Ugh. It's hard to clean them out afterwards. Oh, I would think so. so. And that, by the way, you made this rack too. I did. I made that itself. And that I fired is it. Beautiful. And wow. it's you know, and with Raku, it's just. It's a crapshoot. Yeah, you don't know if it's going to break or... No, yeah. you don't break or if it's the glaze is going to come out right or... Yeah. You throw out a few. Kylie yes. Jean watching with us. Well, right. very There's good. There's a ton of viewers today. This is so this great. Is this terrific. is fun. I wonder where they're all coming from. Well, they, they knew you were on today. <laughs> that's what it is. I shared it this morning. Yeah, good. And so you'll, of course, you'll weave different colors into this yes. as you go. Yes, oh, we're back to that. Yeah, oh, what yeah. I was going to do... I haven't decided yet. I gotta watch out back here. Um, I've got some of the copper jingles that sometimes I've used them in here. Oh, so you would actually thread that on and weave around it. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. The other thing is I have some copper beads yes. that I can put on. And a lot of times, oops, sometimes what I do with the copper beads is I will actually heat them up or is it? And give them a patina. Oh, so you color them. Yeah, so they, can you see that, Lee? Yeah. Yeah, so if I don't like it, just a real stark copper. Just a gold color. I get a little color, yeah. yeah. Jolie then, Runyon watching with us. Who is that? Where are you, uh, Jolie Runyon, again, I hope I'm pronouncing oh, that right. right. Yeah. Oh, where are you then watching from, Jolie? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know where you're from. I this also have great. used, that's also, a red bone. I've used white bone. Yeah. The challenge has been sometimes you get the bone and the holes aren't big enough. Uh, and on one, I really wanted that size, and I had to drill those out. Every one oh, I won't ever do that again. Is that what is that made of? It's bone. Oh, it is actually yeah, bone. Yeah, it's, it's a it's bone. Like probably bird bone or something. Um, no, it's usually I get it over the the trading post. Um, yeah. No, it's not red bone. I mean, it's it's that's true bone from an animal. Yeah. So they have brown, they have black, they have white. So those are Boy, some of the different. There's no limit. Your imagination right. is the only and limit. And then the other thing, you put see in. If I, here's some of the yarn I might use because it's got the copper to it. And you'd weave it in the same way. You're and I'd weave it in the this. same way. And then I have the copper wire that many yeah. times I'll weave in there. God, that looks like it would be impossible to manage that. <laughs> it really does. I mean, that's just mind-boggling how you get around. It really isn't. And after you get it yeah. started, it, this first part is really the. Well, anything done well looks simple, and this you've done very well. <laughs> so it's amazing to see your work. Well, thank you. It is fantastic, and I love the fact that we have all these people. Yeah, welcome to Donna in uh, Burton is watching with us also. Terrific. Perfect. So let's talk about these. This piece over here we haven't seen yet. This one right here. Yes. It's called Young Maiden. So you've been hiding this in your studio. It has. Yes. <laughs> I've been enjoying it. It also has a little top knot on it. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the wood burning for the hair. Mm -hmm. um, I added, put it on this wonderful root burrow, which was, I just, I love that. Yeah. You can see the little braids that I gave her. Well, sourcing um, the root burrow has got to be difficult too, isn't it? 
Yeah, in fact, I wonder where I got this one. This might have come from that same friend that gave me that whole okay. pack of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I've got to start looking for some more because I know yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm using them up. Yeah. They're wonderful. I had one that I found out in my yard, but that's very rare. Yeah. Very, very rare. Yeah. Diana then, Ferentz, guys, from Ohio. Hi, Diana. Hi, Diana. So we, know, we know Diana. Yes, Diana. we do. Welcome. Without you, Diana, well, thank you. So I did the same thing here where it's got the skirt, but a little brighter colors because it's a yeah. younger woman. Yeah. So yeah. I kept it really kind of... That's a great concept. You know, lighter colors, younger woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, and yes. I did my little turquoise on that one. Yeah. But yeah, this was just... They're fun. They're just fun to do. It is so much fun to show to show everybody how difficult this really is. I mean, I'm I'm astonished. Well, you know that brings me to point. First of all, everybody needs to know that all of my pieces are numbered and signed. Oh yeah. So how I, many have you? Done? I'm about 1950, 1950, I guess. And I had like I was at 250 when I came to Sedona in 2001. So, Boy. but I do that. I I may have missed a few in between. Do you put the number on the piece? Yes, usually. On the bottom. On the bottom. Oh, I see it. Yeah. You yeah. sign it and I put sign a it and I, I number it. I usually keep a card on it so that I can kind of keep track of what I've used in it. Yeah. And that helps me if somebody says, well, I want to do one kind of like that. And I can go back and say, okay, I use this, this, and this. Sure. I do have sure. photographs, so that helps as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of cost and whatever, when you go out and buy a basket at Walmart and this little bitty basket costs five bucks, think about it. Somebody wove that basket. And probably got paid pennies. It can't be done mechanically. They are not done on machines. And I, that's yeah. what I tell all of my students. And they think, oh, come on. And no. Everything is hand done. So any basket you see, no matter how intricate, somebody did. And if you got a great seal on it, think about this. That person that made it did not. Yeah. Yeah. So consider the... The effort and time that went into these There's things. a lot of yeah. craftsmen out there that I are, didn't are know not, it couldn't be done. They're not machine done. Yeah. Not at all. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it is something to see. Well, we are so thankful that you've shown us what you have, and I'm so thankful so many people have chimed in today. It's been great. Thank you've, you for coming. You've brought a great audience to us, and, and you're a great compliment to the gallery. With well, all if you have it. any more questions, please ask. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> thank you so much, everybody, and please go to our website. Check out Shirley's work. You'll see it all there. Um, Shirley's actually here, so we have the blessings of having her on the floor three days a week. <laughs> That's right. And so uh, we're lucky Simba. to have you. So thank you so much. And you can do Simba? Oh, well, at Simba. Well, I, uh, an update on Simba. We play Simba. She's done, or he is done, in place. So we're going to get some photos to show you next week. And on the 13th, Friday the 13th, we're going to go to Kim Corey Studio. And you get to see behind the scenes of what Kim does that makes her so much more unique and her work so perfectionistic. When you see her studio, you're gonna be floored, much as you have been with Shirley. <laughs> so please come in on the 13th. We'll be there at Kim's studio. So thanks again. Shirley, this is amazing.